Hi everyone, how are you? We are about to start the 1990s. We're just gonna do the first uh, about 10 slides of this PowerPoint and get through the very end of 1991. There's a lot of things that happened in the 1990s and we are going to try to go a little slowly with them as much as we can anyway with our limited amount of time. So I'm going to share my screen with you and head on over here. All right, and present from here. So I'm gonna minimize myself here so you won't see me in the top corner. And we are going to start with the 1990s. In February of 1990, some very good news at the start of the 1990s, after 27 years in custody for fighting against apartheid, South African leader Nelson Mandela is freed from prison. Under F.W. de Klerk's leadership, Parliament began to repeal the apartheid laws, and finally, F.W. de Klerk did release him from custody. Had we been in class and in school, we would have watched the movie Long Walk to Freedom. Idris Elba is in it and he plays Nelson Mandela. It is an excellent movie. I highly recommend it to any of you. I'm not sure that it's on Netflix, but perhaps on Amazon Prime. Uh, definitely worth checking out. It tells the story of his whole life, including his time in prison and what he does with his time once he is out of prison. For South Africa, this was very important as world leaders began to ease their restrictions on South Africa once apartheid laws had begun to be repealed and Mandela was freed from prison. On March 11th, 1990, one year prior to the formal end of the Soviet Union, Lithuania became the first Baltic state to declare itself independent. And this resulted in the restoration of an independent state of Lithuania. Gorbachev and the Soviet Union were not too thrilled about this when Lithuania first declared itself independent. And so they tried to force Lithuania to stay a part of the USSR, attacked in January of 1991, killing 14 people and wounding hundreds of others. But eventually, Lithuania was able to retain its newly declared independence and, as I said, eventually restore itself as an independent state of Lithuania. An event a little bit closer to home, right here in Boston, on March 18, 1990, 13 works of art were stolen at the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in Boston. This is the biggest art theft in history. The paintings have never been recovered and the crime remains unsolved to this day. The paintings are estimated to be worth about $500 million. The guard said that two men who were dressed as police officers showed up that was how they got into the museum. And then they tied the guards up and looted the museum for over an hour. No arrests were made. None of this work has ever been recovered. The museum today still offers a $10 million reward. These paintings included works by Rembrandt, Degas, Vermeer, so many important famous artists and these incredible paintings uh, that were stolen. The FBI has been involved from the start of this. A lot of people, the FBI included, has suspected that this theft was mob or gang related. Then on April 24th, 1990, the Hubble telescope was launched into space. It remains in operation today, plans uh, to stay in space until 2030 to 2040. So it will come down within our lifetimes within the next 20 years. It was the, and is the only telescope that was designed to be maintained in space. So astronauts go up to the Hubble telescope in order to fix it, maintain it, keep it going. It was not designed to just come back down when they needed to put a new one up. It was designed to be kept and maintained in space. Its successor, which will march in just 11 months will be the James Webb Space Telescope, and that will large, launch in March of 2021. 
In October of 1990, Germany was finally reunited after 45 years of separation. This post-1990 United Germany is not a successor state. It's not a brand new Germany that was created. It is simply an enlargement of the former West Germany. So it didn't create this brand new country. It just enlarged the Federal Republic of Germany. Its capital is Berlin. And it was united because of the two plus four treaty. That was the treaty that brought Germany back together. This was because there were two Germanys at the time and four occupying powers. So the two plus four treaty reunited Germany in October of 1990. Then in December, December 22nd, 1990, Lech Walesa became the first president of Poland. He co-founded and headed Solidarity, which was the Soviet bloc's first independent trade union. So he was very progressive um, in the Soviet Union at this time. He won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1983, and he served as the president of Poland from 1990 to 1995. The USSR viewed him as a threat. He helped to bring the end of communist rule in Poland, which helped to end the Cold War as well. Then in 1991, right at the start in January of 1991, Iraq invaded Kuwait. Um, or the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait, I should say, um, finally reached a breaking point for the United States. In August of 1990, Iraq had invaded Kuwait. They invaded Kuwait in order to gain more access to the Persian Gulf here. You can see that on the screen. Well, in January of 1991, the United States and the United Nations went in to stop Saddam Hussein, who was the Iraqi leader at the time. He was the Iraqi leader from 1979 until 2003, uh, who had been using chemical weapons. The United States won Operation Desert Storm, also known as the first Gulf War. An agreement was signed by Iraq at the end of this war in order to ensure that Iraq would get rid of its poison gas and chemical weapons and to allow UN inspections to take place. So when this agreement to end the war is signed, Iraq says, promises through this treaty that it will get rid of all of these weapons it has and that it will allow UN inspectors access to the weapon sites to make sure that they are no longer there. This becomes a very important part of the what we know as the Iraq War um, or the Second Gulf War that takes place in the early 2000s. Then in May of 1991, Operation Solomon occurred. So it lasts uh, for about two days from May 24th to May 25th, uh, just under two days. It takes place in 36 hours. 14,000 Jews were airlifted from Ethiopia here on the map, to Israel on 35 non-stop flights to escape political destabilization and persecution in Ethiopia. This was a covert Israeli military operation with some help from the United States in order to save the Ethiopian Jewish population from harm. It is a very successful mission in which these Jewish members of the Ethiopian community were saved. And finally, to end 1991, we see the Soviet Union finally collapse and the official end to the Cold War. The Cold War started in 1947 and ended on Christmas Day, 1991, at which point the USSR was officially replaced with the Russian Federation. In March of 1991, the Russian people had voted to change their government from the Soviet Union to the Russian Federation. Yeltsin, a man named Boris Yeltsin, was elected to be the Russian Federation's first directly elected president. And by that following December, by December of 1991, all of the republics in the Soviet Union had declared their independence. And on Christmas Day, December 25th, 
1991, Gorbachev resigned his position as the leader of the Soviet Union, thereby effectively ending and allowing the collapse of the USSR and for the Russian Federation to take its place and to come into official existence. Your work along with the end of this group of slides is going to cover apartheid and focus a little bit on the end of apartheid and what that looked like over time. If you have any questions, as always, please don't hesitate to reach out to me.